Britain Today is a powerhouse, overflowing with ideas, experiments and imagination. Uttered 40 years ago, the words of the dogmatic headmaster in Lindsay Anderson's classic film If still carry a certain significance in the here and now. I'm sure he was talking about the scientific revolution that had swept through the UK and of the many opportunities offered up by the affluent society, I'm pretty sure he wasn't talking about dubstep. But inadvertently, the crusty old science so hit the nail on the head, you see, Britain really is overflown with new ideas and imagination, especially when it comes to music. And when it does come to music, perhaps the most well-known and best trusted arbiter is the Nationwide Mercury Prize. Established 16 years ago, the aim of the prize has always been to celebrate music on its own terms, away from sales figures and airplay, creating an equal platform for all manner of artists, be they household names or experimental outsiders who would have otherwise escaped mainstream attention. Where else would you find Soweto Kinch sharing a stage with Radiohead, or artists as diverse as Polar Bear and Coldplay being treated with equal precedence as they were in 2005. And for 2008, I hear you whimper? Well, without descending into a bottomless list, I think it's safe to say that the past 12 months have been ripe for homegrown talent. Scores of bands have impressed with their debut albums, whilst many established acts have returned to the fore, some after a considerable period away. In the meantime, a generation has risen up from underneath the radar, taking its influences from all over the well, from all over the record shop, and mixing them together to create something entirely new, whilst contemporaries of theirs make a splash on both sides of the Atlantic. Basically, anyone with ears is going to have their favourites. I know I have. I mean, with ears like these, I've got big favourites, trust me. The prize is launched at Covent Garden's Hospital Club, and I'll be there for the duration, generally getting in the way, but hopefully teasing a few words out of artists, pundits and judges alike. We'll also bring you live performances from the day and a subsequent series of programmes in which we discuss these shortlisted albums in greater depth. Until then, keep your eyes looking forward, your ears open and your fingers crossed and hopefully we'll see you very, very soon. One of the shortlisted artists who isn't scared of mucking in and collaborating with other people is Laura Marling, having worked with Mystery Jets and Noah and the Whale, frontman of whom Charlie Fink produced her debut solo album, Alas, I Cannot Swim. It's a beautiful and intimate collection of songs that mark her out as a talented musician and a naturally capable songwriter. <laughs> He walked down a busy street, staring solely at his feet, clutching pictures of past lovers at his side. Stood at the table where she sat and removed his hat in respect of her presence. Presents her with the pictures and says, These are just ghosts that broke my heart before I met you. These are just ghosts that broke my heart before I met you. It was all getting a little bit on top upstairs, so we've come under. We're uh, borrowing the Portico Quartet's dressing room to have a quick chat with Laura Marling. Uh, congratulations. Thank congratulations you. on your shortlisted album. Um, it's really nice to see it there. Um, not just for yourself, but what I find really interesting is the fact that you're from a very distinct musical community that sort of sprung up in the past couple of years as yourself. Mystery Jets, Noah and the Whale, uh, Johnny Flynn and the Sussex, we're all kind of loosely uh, connected. Mm. Does that community, um, has that coloured the way that you write and the way that you sort of uh, go about recording your music? I think it's, um, well, Charlie Fink from Knowing the Whale yeah, uh, produced, produced the it, album, course, yeah. so it has, in that, yeah, in that respect, and it's also the kind of, it, it, I think it's, it's, it's just as important, but it affects the way we travel and the way we, you know, yeah. um, we, we feel quite connected in that respect. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll look at you and say it's the happiest that I've ever been. And I'll say, I no longer feel I have to be a James Dean. And she'll say, yeah, well, I feel oh, pretty happy too. And I'm always pretty happy that I'm just kicking back with you.
there seems to be. Did he have any part in, in the writing? Or was it just the production? Because no, just the production. Because it's funny. There's uh, there's certain songs on a, a last I cannot swim that kind of you can hear elements of Noah and the Whale in them, and there seems to be like mm. an overlap in in the writing styles as well. Maybe well, not we, an overlap. All, but that's why we're all you know we all know each other because yeah. we're all from the same influence. Yeah, yeah. And what are those influences? I sort of like I guess well the thing that me and Charlie have in common is that we both love Bonnie Prince Billy yeah. and this guy called Thanksgiving. Um, and you know there, there was that whole sort of American anti folk uh -huh. thing. You know, anti folk's terrible, yeah. terrible word. Yeah. Uh, but you know that 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 I think that crossed over, and we just got it. And I think it it it, it sort of was quite liberating. Yeah. And, and I think that's Johnny Flynn as well. And yeah. And other bands, I think like uh, Peggy Sue and the Pirates, I think are yeah. great exponents of that as well. They firmly believe that it's anti soul that they're doing, and not yes. anti folk, which is one of the funniest things I heard. They're so funny. Yeah, good girls. The songs are all quite intimate and they're very personal songs. Mm. With uh, a prize like this, do you feel? How do you feel about them then crossing over into a much larger audience? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm undecided. Right. <laughs> I'm undecided. See how it goes over the next few weeks. Yeah. Well, they're beautiful songs, and I think a lot of people are going to start to love them very quickly. Oh, thank you. And uh, yeah, it's a cracking album. Well, look, well, hopefully we'll keep it nice and short because we've all well, we've probably got a lot of things to do better than sitting around in a, a jazz band's dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> but um, enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you. And hopefully we shall see you soon. And if not, it will be at the award ceremony in September. Oh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Down a busy street, staring solely at his feet, clutching pictures of past lovers at his side. Stood at the table where she sat and removed his hat in respect of her presence. <laughs>